Welcome to a holiday update from the home of the Frankenbike cartel. This stunning melange of late 80s neon and the uh, nonsensical acronym Mountain Bike are a clue to today's theme, which is if you could only have one bike. Now, this is probably the thorniest question in cycling. Uh, and if you ask me to sell off all but one of my bikes, uh, my answer would be, I would use some of the proceeds to buy a taser or a cattle prod and I would use it vigorously and repeatedly on whoever suggested such a thing. I'm just outside giving some of my everyday bikes a bit of a winter clean and there's a few examples here that illustrate perfectly the argument. Um, for example, I would not fancy these tubular carbon spokes on a road race bike in a tangle with tree branches on the trails, uh, nor would I fancy trying to hold the wheels in a peloton with my road club on this giant floating armchair. But there is a time when the conversation is entirely pertinent and that is when friends or loved ones who aren't into cycling are thinking of getting into cycling so they ask me that question and then suddenly this becomes probably one of my favorite conversations and here's a perfect example to illustrate the answer which is that if you could only have one bike it would be this it would be a retro probably late 80s or early 90s 26 inch wheel mountain bike for so many reasons and it's not just my bias because that's what i grew up with the fact is as i'm about to show you you can do anything with one of these bikes this one's got slick tires on it so it can actually go fairly quickly in in traffic as a commuter it's also got a pannier rack on it so it can be used as a bike packing adventure bike um, but it's so much more versatile than just that and let me show you why now this British Eagle Trail dates back to I think 1988 or 89 um, and it really is British. It was built I think in Wales from British Steel, Reynolds 531. Um, it's similar spec to my Ridgeback that you'll have seen me get very dewy eyed over in a previous video uh, which is my ultimate bike because of course it was my first grown up bike. Um, this actually is it's slightly higher spec than my Ridgeback um, as it was. Um, because obviously 531 was a, was a very desirable tube set back in the day. Um, similar X-Age trail group set, but slightly higher spec, things like shifters, um, even down to the ITM handlebar, which is a, you know, certainly a step up from the sort of gas pipe steel that you'd have seen on a basic bike of the day. Um, so I was watching this on eBay. I think it was listed for between 60 and 70 quid. And a friend came to me who wasn't a cyclist and said, I'm thinking of getting into cycling. I need to buy a bike. Can you help me? And I said, mate, look no further. And I pretty much strong armed him into buying this. And neither of us has looked back with regret at all. Um, now, I'd obviously been watching this for a while, thinking about buying it for myself, because for sentimental reasons, it reminded me of the Ridgeback. Um, but of course, having found the Ridgeback itself, I didn't need this, but I was determined not to let it go. Um, the first bit of good news is that my dear friend did end up getting this for under £70, which is astonishing when you see the spec and the quality and condition that it was in when it arrived. Um, sadly, I didn't take any photos when it first turned up, but um, it really wasn't much different to this. It had the original tyres that needed to be binned. Um, it had a horrible sprung saddle, which we, of course, replaced with a turbo. Um, one of the first things I would always do anyway. And also, of course, we replaced the handlebar grips because I'm always slightly icky about grips that other strangers have sweated on. But uh, apart from that, it is, as it stands, exactly what you see that he got for 70 quid. So I think for probably another one or 200, which is pennies in cycling, he managed to get a top quality rack, the turbo, the handlebar grips, I think even the bottle cage and the Zafal pump came with it. Um, oh, of course, and the, the Schwalbe City Jet tyres, which are the same ones I have on my Dave Quinn, which are great for blasting through city traffic. Um, makes this bike actually quite quick. Um, but what makes it such a wonderful all-rounder is um, the same reasons that I would recommend a retro mountain bike to anybody. And that is, number one, um, quite a nice upright position. So when, if you are new to cycling, it's quite a sort of intuitive and comfortable riding position. Nothing too aero, and also you can see around you, which is more important than being um, down in the drops. Secondly, of course, it's robust. You could clatter this thing into curbs and it wouldn't uh, do it any damage. Um, thirdly, they're not very popular with thieves. Despite this thing being absolutely beautiful um, and standing out a mile off, the kind of scropes that go around nicking bikes aren't looking for this sort of thing. Um, and even if they did nick it, they'd have a hard time selling it without you catching them because it's so distinctive. Um, so those are just a few reasons. Also, of course, the versatility. 
you could swap these tires out for knobblies and have it as a um, a fun trail rider um, of course the the fact that you can carry luggage on it makes it great for adventures um, and finally of course ease of maintenance um, you don't have to subscribe to this channel to know that there's plenty of resources out there for learning how to tweak these gears and brakes yourself um, I learned to do it by trial and error at the age of 11 on a bike just like this. Um, of course, nowadays, there's a lot more information out there um, for people to do the same with very basic tools. So they're cheap and easy to look after, too. Um, the only disadvantage, I suppose, if you were uh, starting to get more serious about cycling, is that these kind of bikes are not light. But then, of course, we're not talking about a performance bike here. We're talking about a do-it-all all-rounder. If you start uh, riding on one of these, you're going to get fit because it's quite a weight to lug around. Um, and of course, once you're fit, you can reward yourself with bike number two, which might be something a bit more racy. But that's not the theme of today's video. We're not talking about if I could have two bikes, we're talking about one. Right, so step one is knowing where to look and what to look for. And this is one of my favourite SFW internet missions. Um, I always start with eBay, although I did sign up for Facebook solely for the purpose of using uh, Marketplace. Um, there are other classified sites that you don't need an identity or a bank account to use. Um, I steer clear of those. Yes, there are bargains on there, but it's um, an absolute breeding ground for thieves because, of course, they can sell and uh, buy anonymously. And we do not want to encourage that market. Uh, eBay is usually my first port of call. So I start with one of my favourite saved search terms, which is just vintage mountain bike in sporting goods. Keep it open. And lo and behold, look, first thing you can see is a Saracen Iger from 1990. I would buy that. Currently bidding's at £11.50. Goodness knows what it'll go for, but that looks exactly the ticket. Um, I won't comment on this Pine Mountain because I know exactly who the gentleman is that's selling it. He's one of my fellow restoration YouTubers. Um, I don't doubt it's worth 500 quid because I know how meticulously he will have restored it. If I'm not mistaken, that will be Monkey Shred's work um, and I'm sure it's worth every penny. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to start critiquing that one. Um, scrolling down, I found something very special, which uh, I'm almost in two minds about sharing with you because I'm tempted to buy it for myself. Um, somewhere down here, look, Orange Prestige for 225, that's astonishing. Um, you know, the frame alone would probably sell for that. Ah, yes, I think I'm about to find what I wanted to show you. Uh, not my most recent purchase, the Bedlington Terrier 2021 calendar. I'm a man of many passions. Um, this one, the Muddy Fox Courier. Now, we've talked already about Muddy Fox in one of my previous videos, but this really is the original. And for 200 quid, I, to be honest, I'm tempted to buy this right now. Um, you can see it's got a horrible plastic saddle on it, but apart from that, this is completely original. Um, they've obviously got the handlebars on upside down, but um, other than that, I mean, you can tell by the, the shine on the front brake caliper there. It's still got the reflectors on, so it's clearly not been uh, tinkered with. Um, it's got the chainstay mounted U-brake there, um, a bit of a mix and match transmission. I think I don't think that's the original derailleur, or, or maybe it is. Yeah, it is actually. It's a, it's a Suntour group set. So yeah, for 200 quid, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You could buy this right now, put a nice saddle and handlebar grips on it, and bosh, away you go. And you are riding an absolute classic. So as you see, step one can be as quick as 10 minutes if you take my wise advice and find that muddy fox that we just found. Um, so let's say you did. Um, the next step, step two, is the cleanup. Um, it amazes me when I watch so many restoration videos on YouTube that a lot of people don't bother cleaning the bikes before they take them apart and, and inspect them. Um, for me, the first thing you should do is give it a blast with this stuff, muck off. Um, I'm not being paid to endorse this stuff. The fact is I've been buying it since I've been a cyclist or since it existed. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Um, it has this incredible property of not only getting rid of all the stuff that clings to your bike, with perhaps the exception of the chain, which does need a bit of a degreaser, um, but also it seems to convert um, both aluminium and steel corrosion. Uh, it has this amazing way of getting rust um, back to black and also aluminium corrosion um, off a bike. So when you finish by just wetting and then soaking and then after a few minutes jetting off your bike with this stuff, um, you end up with something nice to work with. And finally, step three, which is bring it to me. 
Um, if for whatever reason I'm busy, uh, you can of course look at this channel or some of my friends' channels and learn how to do your own nut and bolt strip down and high gloss polish finish. Um, I do these things for fun, but it's by no means a necessity in most cases. Certainly this bike was ready to ride as soon as it arrived. All we really did was polish it up and put some nice bits on it to customise it. Um, and that's probably the case with, for example, that Muddy Fox that we just saw on eBay. Um, the fact is, it's very, very easy to buy something like this that is endlessly versatile and, of course, beautiful for less than the price of something like this fancy seat post. Um, so really, there's nothing stopping you. Um, so all that remains for me to say, as always, is please like, comment and subscribe. Um, I'd be fascinated to hear what your take is on the age old, if you could only have one bike debate. It is the thorniest question in cycling, so I can't wait to see what some of your responses are. And as always, um, stay tuned for more next time.